Today we're going to go through zone damper systems and specifically a bigger focus on VAV zone dampers. I know I got a VVT behind me, I'll explain the difference, but we're going to focus on VAV and dive deep on that one. Primary differences between the VVT and the VAV system. VVT stands for variable volume and temperature, VAV is variable air volume. A VAV system is one mode only, cooling. It's cooling all day, non-stop, all the time, no matter what. If your building doesn't want cooling year round, don't put VAV in. That's what this, this system is for. There are exceptions to that. We'll talk about that in terms of like heaters, um, but it's running cooling all the time. VVT is typically small systems where you don't need cooling all the time, five, 10, 15 ton systems, but you still want some level of damper control where every zone gets its own thermostat, every zone gets its own damper and can let more or less air in the system. In the case of VVT, the sensors would all vote whether they wanted heating or cooling, majority rules, and the air handling system would go to whatever they wanted, and the other zones would not get what they wanted until later on. VAV, variable air volume, which has been around since the 1960s, those systems, like I said, are cooling only with one exception. The air handler does run heat once. So in this case, we have a hydronic air handler with hot water heat. This one will turn on the hot water heat in the morning. We call it morning warm up. Uh, and what it'll do in those cases is it'll warm the space up until the return air temperature gets to a certain set point, maybe 68 or 70 degrees. Or in some cases, what it'll do if you have DDC controls that are all talking to each other, it'll look at the average of those zones and when the average zone temperature gets up to a certain temperature, it'll shut off the heat. So all the dampers go wide open. They all take as much heat as they possibly can, whether they want it or not. We just like basically cook the space. Then we shut the heat off. It never goes on for the rest of the day, no matter what. We run cooling the rest of the day. We provide 55 degrees supply air into all of the zones. So there's a couple things that you need to do this. You need to have a uh, air handling system or a rooftop that has a VFD in it, variable frequency drive, where it can speed up and slow down the fan. As these dampers throttle down their damper, as they throttle back, the pressure upstream of them builds up. When the pressure builds up, we slow the VFD down and provide less air. So as some of the zones don't want full cooling, we stop providing full airflow. And then later on when it's hot and everybody wants full cooling and the dampers open up wide again, then we go ahead and ramp the fan back up. So the fan is constantly ramping up and down. There's a, uh, a pressure probe in the duct measuring that to do that. The VAV box itself that I'm showing you right here, this has got a couple things that are a little bit different than a typical VVT damper. So in this case, I have a round inlet and a rectangular outlet, and the outlet is much bigger than the inlet. That serves the purpose of having high pressure system here, say 1.25 inches of static to two inches of static on a modern system, it could be higher. And then downstream of that, where it widens up, the pressure drops, and now I got 0.5 to one inch of duct static pressure there. Um, there's also gonna be a cross flow on here. This one's a linear one. There's also ones that are in the shape of an X. What those do is they measure velocity pressure and static pressure and use that along with the dimensional opening to calculate the CFM. The controller is doing that math. So in this case, I have a DDC controller on here. It slides over this shaft, it would screw in, and now it has the actuator built in and it can turn the shaft. It also has two places for these pneumatic tubes to connect where it can measure those pressures for us and do that calculation. So all the sensors wired to this, the pneumatic tubes connect to it, the actuator is built in, and then there'll be a network cable coming off it to network it to the main building automation system. So once it calculates that minimum maximum CFM, it operates between that range. If the zone wants more or less cooling, it stays in that particular uh, range. So we got VAV dampers. You could also have fan powered dampers, uh, where there's actually a fan system in there. It's obviously much bigger than the one I just held up. That's a whole nother topic for another day, but that would be part of an overall VAV system as well. We have the VAV dampers, we have the cooling only air handler. And another thing we have to keep in mind is that cooling only, but it has no idea what's going on in the space. The air handler, whether it's this air handler or a rooftop, has no idea what temperature is in the room. It assumes everyone always just wants cooling, unless it gets that morning warm up command. Other than that, everybody wants cooling. So what it does is it provides 55 degree air, just nonstop. So there's a duct temperature sensor, supply air temperature sensor in the duct of those units that just maintaining 55 degree air all the time. In order to do that, I have to have modulating cooling capacity. I can't have one compressor and turn it on and turn it off. I expect it to be 55. It'll be 55 on average, but it'll be 73, it'll be 41, 73, 41, it'll average to 55. Also, two stages is not gonna do it. If you have a two stage 
uh, machine and you put it in the VAV application, you'll beat the second compressor to death. It'll be clicking on and off all the time. If you're gonna use fixed speed compressors, at an absolute bare minimum, you probably need four compressors. Better would be like six or eight compressors or a variable speed inverter compressor or a variable speed inverter compressor along with a fixed speed and you can kind of tag team them that way. Uh, but you gotta have some way to modulate the capacity. Uh, in this case, we have chill water piping, so we can modulate it with chill water. Uh, that's really easy to modulate with a variable speed circulator or with a modulating valve. Uh, chill water is pretty forgiving in that regard. So 55 degree supply air, lots of stages of cooling to do that. Modulating fan, uh, controlled off of static pressure to do that. VAV terminal boxes in each space and have a zone temperature sensor on those. You can group zones if you want to. If you want to take five offices on the east perimeter and group them together on one damper with one stat, you can do that. Just know that four of those spaces won't be as comfortable as the space that has the thermostat. Uh, but you can do a little bit of grouping in that regard. Um, if the perimeter zones need heat, because a lot of times the core of the building needs cooling year round. So we're on that in the Midwest, it's a cold climate, we get down to zero degrees or colder sometimes. We have lots of buildings that run cooling year round, even on zero or negative 20 degree days, we run cooling in those buildings. The core interior of the building needs cooling. But the perimeter zones around that, they have exposure to the outside walls, they don't need cooling. Think about it, if you're in the middle of the building, you're the core of the building and you got perimeter around you and a floor above you and a floor below you. It's San Diego all the time. It's 72 degrees. Every side of you is 72 degrees. You don't need heat, right? But the people on the perimeter do. So in those cases, you can put baseboard heaters in, either hydronic or electric. You can put duct heaters in, either hydronic or electric, for each of those zones. When you do that, the controller that's controlling your damper, you also want that to control that heating source. So what I don't want to happen is have the baseboard kick on heating and then this damper opens up and brings on the cooling capacity at the same time. Then I'm heating and cooling the same room, which is very wasteful, obviously. So if this controls the baseboard heat or the duct heater also, it can make sure that those things don't overlap and fight each other. So you want to have that control that way. Um, diffusers can also be different on VAV systems and usually are. Uh, you want to have a diffuser that has a low turndown ability. As you ramp the airflow down, whether it's because the main fan slowed down or because the damper throttled back, less air comes out of the diffuser. If you have standard or low end diffusers, that air comes out of the diffuser and just dumps down in a column of cold air on top of someone important's head typically. So you wanna have a diffuser that has good turn down ability. So when it has less airflow, it can still throw the air out the diffuser and let it mix into the space. So you would wanna use diffusers that are VAV style diffusers. So you might have an existing job, air handlers working correctly, VAV controllers are working correctly, people are not comfortable, they're getting cold air dumped on them, it may be an option to swap the diffusers out to help resolve some of that. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how your VAV system is supposed to operate. There's a lot of them out there that have been modified over the years to try to solve particular problems for people. Um, one of the common things that happens in that case is they try to get the main air handler to run heat in the middle of the day, and you can do that, and the controls can do that, and it's possible. However, it tends to cause more problems than it solves. If you've got a big enough building where the interior needs cooling and only the outside needs heat and you switch the main air handler over to heating, the people in the middle get heating that they don't want to get. They want cooling year round and you're giving them heat. So it's a really bad solution uh, and it will cause more problems than it's worth. So you definitely want to make sure you have perimeter heat in all those zones. And if you don't, that's what your solution to be. Add more perimeter heat as opposed to make the air handler switch into the heating mode. Um, if you want to dive deeper into the VAV topic, you're going to need to go down to specific control path. So if you have pneumatic controls, you can research that. If you have DDC controls from manufacturer A, B, or C, you can research into that. But from a generic standpoint, this is probably about as far of a deep dive you can do. Um, and if you have interest in VVT style controls, we can cover that with you in a future video and explain how that all works. Mm -hmm.